we're working now on the Shitas HaRambam regarding the Dalit Kosos. And we're in the Otzer HaYunim on page Gimel, really on page Dalit, but let's just review the Ar Sameach that's quoted on the last paragraph on Gimel in the Otzer HaYunim. And he has a new Shita which he builds in the Ramam in two different Ramams. He puts together sort of a collection of two Ramams and integrates them together. The Rama writes in his opening line in Perak Zion, which is the Perak that's dedicated in Hilchus Chomets Matzah to the Mitzvah of Sipur Yitzis Mitzray, Mitzvah Sasei Shal Torah L'Saper Ben Nisim Ben Eflo Shanasu L'Avosein Mitzray B'Lel Chamisho So Ben Nisan Shenemar Zokar Sayom Azer Sher Yatsosem Ben Mitzrayim K'mo Shenemar Zokar Sayom HaShabos so the Rambam has, and it's a very famous Rambam, an analogy, an equation between the mitzvah of Sipur Yitzis Mitzrayim, derived from Zohar Sayom HaZesha Yitzos Mitzrayim, and the mitzvah of Kiddush, of Leil Shabbos, Zohar Sayom HaZesha Shabbos. The Arsameh claims that what the Rambam wants to convey to us, the Rambam's intention, is that just like the Torah commands us to recite Kiddush on Shabbos, so too they added, the Rabbanan added to the Torah's requirement, Yayin, and the Kiddush should be recited on Yayin. And by analogy, according to the Rabbanan, in the Mitzvah of Sipi Yitzis Mitzrayim, as formulated here in Perek Zayim, Elchus Chom and Tumatzah, Mitzvah and Torah, Liz, Lizkar, Hanisim, Lusaparosam, the Rabbanon established that that mitzvah of Sipur, which is fulfilled the pair with a verbal recitation, should be established al yayim. So Kiddush, which is Zechira the pair on yayim. And again, that was the rabbinic requirement that the Sipur should be on yayim, the Kiddush should be on yayim. So to by analogy, Sipur is Mitzrayim, which is the pair should be organized alayayim, on koso shalayim. So we have now Kiddush alayayim on Lel Shabbos. We have Sipur Yitzis Mitzrayim alayayim. And basically, according to the understanding of the Arsmech and the Rambam, we're not talking about a mitzvah of Shtia, but rather a mitzvah of Sipur Yitzis Mitzrayim alayayim. You know, it's almost as if we have a brach alayayin, which we've seen over and over again in the mitzvah of kos shel bracha. So too we have sipur yitzim shetram alayayin. For me personally, there's a big chiddush because I always understood that sipur yitzim shetram is ala matzah because chazal derived from the pasuk lechem oni, the Gemara Mestafi, Lechem sha'onim olav dvarim harbe. Or, for example, we might think that the mitzvah of Sipra begins on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, Tamalom and Bavur Zeh, Bishosh Yesh Matzu Mora Munachem Lufanecha. So the Munachem Lufanecha means that the Sipur should be on the Matzah and the Mora that are Munachem Lufanecha. But now we're adding a whole new dimension. And we're saying that Sipri is the tribe should be a Yayin. And the reason for that is because the Rabbanan established in Kiddush on Lel Shabbos that the Kiddush should be recited al Yayin, and they borrowed, or shall we say, cloned a similar concept of Sipur al Yayin. And the Arsameach adds another Rambam into the equation. And that's the Rambam not in Perik Zion of Chavit Sumatza, but rather the Rambam in Perik Ches. And there the Rambam says that Misha Elo Yayin Sochim, so he doesn't have the possibility on Pesach to drink wine. He simply doesn't have any access to wine. The Rambam says in such a case, Makadish his kiddush should be on matzah. 
Kiderech Sha'osim B'Shabbos. Just like in Shabbos, if he has no Yayin, he'll recite Kiddush Al Pas. So too, in regard to the Kiddush of Leil Pesach, if he has no Yayin, he'll recite Kiddush Al Pas, which in this case means Matzah. The Osa Kolad Varm Al Seder Azeh. And he continues with the Haggadah from Kiddush straight through the Haggadah, even though he has no Yayin. Says Rabbi Simcha, Mevuar, and this you'll see on the top of page Dalin, Sheyacho Adam Lekayim Es Dinar Bakosos Alapas, Af Sheeno Makayim Din Shesia Bepas. So it means let's separate the mitzvah of Dalid Kosos Alayayim. From the din of Shitiya of the Ayin. The Ramam is shifting the emphasis away from Shia onto the Amira Sabracha. And therefore, Kiddush can be recited even without a coast of Yayin, in event that he doesn't have Yayin. And it'll fulfill not only Kiddush Alapas, but also the first of the Dalit Kosa. Where is this Kos Yayin? So you see that the Ramam understands the mitzvah of Dalit Kos as being independent of Shasiya Yayin. He doesn't have a Yayin, he's not going to have any Shasiya Yayin, but yet he still can salvage the mitzvah of Dalit Kosos in a different form, in the case of Kiddush over Has. And as far as the other three Kosos are concerned, it's not exactly clear in the Orsamer where. Do you have the Kiddush al Pass? You know, we're not dealing with Kiddush, we're dealing with Birkas Amazon, we're dealing with Halil, we're dealing with uh, a whole different set of brachos, like Magid, that have nothing to do with Pass. So that question remains unanswered. And we pointed out, I just want to review this point from yesterday, that according to the tour, it works just the opposite, that because the mitzvah of Dalit Kosos requires Shasir, if he doesn't have Dalit Kosos, he can't even fulfill the mitzvah of Kiddush. That mitzvah, which applies on every Shabbos and every Yom, with any day that's sanctified, and in the absence of Yayin, he will fulfill that mitzvah of Kiddush ala pas, not in the case of Lela Pesa. So we see two extremes over here. I mean, the first nafkimina between the Rambam and the Tur, the way the Yosemir presents it, is what happens with Kiddush if he has no Yayin. And the Yosemir and the Rambam, and the Rambam is outspoken about this, Perakas Milchus Chomitz Ramatsuram says he'll make Kiddush our part. Kiddurek Sha'osim B'Shavitz. If you don't have Yayin, you make Kiddush our part. The Tur is the other extreme. He's saying that in the absence of Yayin, then the whole mitzvah of Kiddush goes down the tube. Because the Rabbanan established that Kiddush has to be part of the Dalit Kosos on the night of Pesach. So the Kiddush of Leila Pesach takes on a whole new identity, which is fundamentally different from the identity of Kiddush the whole year round on Shabbos and Yom Tov. Now Kiddush on the night of Pesach takes on a whole new form. It is now one of the Dalit Kosos. And according to the tour, the Dalit Kosos requires Shtias Yayin. And if he doesn't have a possibility of Shtias Yayin for Kiddush, because he doesn't have any access to Yayin, then the whole mitzvah of Kiddush goes down the tubes. It's lost. But in truth, the fundamental origin or source of this Machlokas goes way, way beyond just the question of Kiddush. The Yosemech and the Ramam is learning that the mitzvah of Dalit Kosos is simply to have the Kos in order to embellish the Sipri Yitzis Mitzrayim, which is going to manifest four different brothers. Kos times four will enhance your Sipri Yitzis Mitzrayim. In the absence of the Kosos, you'll fulfill the Sipri Yitzis Mitzrayim in another way. In the case of Kiddush, Alapas on, on Matzah. 
So that the essence of Dalit Kosos, according to this interpretation of the Rambam, is Sipri Yitzis Mitzrayim. A whole new paradigm shift. The Torah, on the other hand, sees the emphasis and the essence of the mitzvah dalit kosos in shesia sakos. You have no yayin, you forfeit this mitzvah. This mitzvah is not an addendum, tafel, secondary to simply tzis mitzrayim. It's a mitzvah unto itself. And that mitzvah, according to the tour, is going to radically change the whole mitzvah of Kiddush. And we're talking about shtia of dalit kosos. However, the brisker Rav, who is more or less, uh, well, shall we say, young, a younger contemporary of the Mayor Simcha, right? let's say Mayor Simcha died at, towards the beginning of the 20th century and the brisker Rav in the middle of the 20th century. He's of the opinion in the Rambo that there are two different dimensions to Dalit Kosos. There's an overlap of two kiyumim. And he says over here, you'll see it in the Otsar Ayuna, which we copied for you on page Dalit. Shnei Dinim Biarba Kosos. Again, Shnei Dinim. Right? What do you expect from the Brisker Rov? Shnei Dinim, right? That's, uh, that's what Brisk is all about, right? And the Brisker Rov is going to weave this into the Chuvasa Rosh as well. Which is not the way we understood the Chuvah Sarosh. We understood the Chuvah Sarosh based on our uh, Moody Hode studies that fundamentally the Rush is maintaining that Dalit Kosa, Kosa Shal Bracha, just that the Rabbanan added an element of Shasia. So that identical Shasia that applies to any Kosha Bracha applies to the Dalit Kosas, which means you need Molly Lugmov. And in the case of Dalit Kosos, each person has to drink their own coke. But in any event, the Biskarov understood from the Chuvasa Rosh that the Rabbanon added a whole new kiyum to the Kosal Shalbracha kiyum, and that is the kiyum of Shtia, of Yayin, Derecheris, whatever you want to call it. And therefore, the Biskarov says that we now have an overlap of two different mitzvahs with regard to Dalit Kosal. On the one hand, Yeshno Din Shal Shtias Arba Kosos. But again, what does he mean by Shtia here? We shouldn't be misled. He doesn't mean Shtia as an end to itself. He means whatever Shtia is, is, is required on a Kosal Bracha. And from that perspective, you could divvy it up amongst the people sitting at the Seder table. Yeshno Din Shal Bracha Ala Kos. So we have here an overlap of bracha ala kos, and in this case times four, plus a din of shtir. And the brisker rav claims that the Rambam has a very explicit source for this conclusion that in Dalit Kosos we really have under the surface two different mitzvahs. Because the Gemara says on Kufches, Shesan Vivas Achas, which means he has the Shtia, but he doesn't have the Amiris Brach Alakos because he drank four Kosos consecutively without reciting Brachas. Is he Deyayin Yotzer, he Deyarba Kosos Lo Yotzer? He has fulfilled his mitzvah of Shtia, which requires that he drank four Kosos, that he drink four Kosos, which is exactly what he did, but he forfeits the mitzvah. Of Arba Kosos as Kosos Shal Bracha because he didn't recite any Brachas. He drank them consecutively. Where were the where were the Brachas here? He drank four Kosos consecutively. There's no Bracha. Who low Kiev said, Din Shal Kosos Bracha Shayesh Bi Arba Kosos. He was Makayim the mitzvah of Shtias Yayin of Arba Kosa. Now we have the case of Shasan Chai, and now we're going to flip it around. He's not going to fulfill the mitzvah of Shtias Dalit Kosa, because that is the Derech Heres Arevlo 
and now he's drinking concentrated wine, which is not tasty at all. But Yatsi Yadei Koshal Brach, that dimension he will fulfill. Because even if it's high, it's still young. And therefore he recited a Brach Alakut. And this, this Briska Rav, by the way, fits so beautifully into everything we've saying. If, if I would have read this paragraph before we did all the work that we've been putting into it, I would only understand it on a, on a very, very technical, superficial level. But now I think we're ready to get into the Amkis of it. Now, it could be possible that the Briska Rav would be correct according to the second parents of the Chuvas Rosh. You remember the Rosh vacillated back and forth. And in the first answer of the Rosh, he clearly understood that Dalit Kosos are Kosos of Bracha with one difference, one change, and that is that whereas in Kosos of Bracha, one person drinks from the Kos, in this case of Kosos of Bracha, for the Dalit Kosos of Leil Pesach, Everybody has to drink personally. Each individual has to drink his own cup. But in the second parrots of the uh, of the rush, he says something different. He says that there's a mitzvah of yayin. He's got to drink dollar coasts of yayin. That could be what the brisker rov is saying here. But certainly, this understanding of the Rambam is a radical departure from the Yosameach's understanding of the Rambam. According to Yosameach, we're dealing with the mitzvah of Sipri Yitzis Mitzrayim. There's no independent mitzvah of Shtia Stalin Kosos. In fact, he can fulfill the first of the four Kosos at least. We're not clear about the other three yet. In an event that he doesn't have Yayin, with Pas. So we see clearly that Dalit Kosos is not a mitzvah of Shtia. There's no way he can drink a pass. Now, the Arsavech has the upper hand here in one sense, because the Ramah opens up Perik Zion with an equation between Kiddush on Shabbos and Kiddush on Leila Pesach. To the extent to which, just like Kiddush on a Doraisa level requires Zachar Bipeh, reciting a Zachira Bipeh, the Rabbanan stepped in and required that the Zachira Bipeh be over Yayin. The Torah, in the case of Leil Pesach, required Sipur Bipeh. Again, because of the Pesach, Zachar, Siyom HaZesh, Yitzhah, and Yitzhah. And the Rabbanan said that that Sipur should be on Yayin. But obviously, from that perspective, there's no independent mitzvah of shtia, not in Kiddush on Leil Shabbos, nor in Kiddush on Leil Asedah, because the yayin is only there in order to set up the Kiddush al yayin. And that's true even with regard to Dalit Kosos, based on the Ram's analogy between Zohar and Zohar. How then is the Briska Rav going to justify the Rambam's opening position that there's an equation to Kiddush of Shabbos. And Kiddush of Shabbos is no mitzvah shtia. Obviously, somebody has to drink for the cost, but there's no mitzvah of shtia. So where does, where does the Rambam have this equation? How does the Rambam come and equated to Kiddush. Leila say there is Dalit Koso Shal Shtia. And, and we're saying in the Briska Rav that the Rambam is holding that he, there's a fundamental mitzvah and a key of Shtia. So much so that in the case of Shasan Chai, he doesn't have that extra mitzvah of Shtia. He may have Koso Brach, but not Shtia. In the case of Vivasachas, he has the mitzvah of Shtia and Yotzam. I mean, again, he forfeits the Dalit Kosa Shobracha, but he has Shtia. He drank four cups. 
Not like Rashi's situation where he poured four cups into one cup. Oh, so now in the next paragraph, which starts with the word lachem, he's going to try to explain how in the Brisker Rav's frame of reference, the Ramam equates Kiddush on Shabbos with Kiddush on Leil HaPesach. Lachem. Afshid Dima HaRambam is mitzvah zocher es yom ha-Shabbos l'kadsho. Le mitzvah zocher es yom ha-Zesh yitzos in Mitzrayim. And the Afshu Kosov Shanita L'kayim is mitzvah arba kosos b'pas, which was a very strong proof text for the Arsamea. Let's see what that means. He's adding an element of uh, relativity. The words of the Rambam are not to be taken from A to Z the whole way from beginning to end. No, no, no. Relative. Relative to one single dimension of Dalit Kosos, the Ram is going to establish this analogy to Zohar Siyam HaShavos Likadcho and allow you in the absence of Yayin to recite Kiddush Alapas. The Brisket Rav is right. There are two dimensions to Dalit Kosos. And in the case of Son Mavasachas, he has the additional dimension of Shesias Dalit Kosos. In the case of Chai, no, that's not called Shesias Dalit Kosos because who enjoys drinking Chai? That unconcentrated wine, it's dangerous. I'm just dramatizing. But the Rambam, in two places, focuses and singles out for our attention the other element of Dalit Kosos. Forget about Shtir. There's a mitzvah of Dalit Kosos of Rocha. And from that perspective, the first of the four Kosos, which is Kiddush, is identical to Kiddush on El Shabbos. You'll ask me, what Rocha? is going to be integrated into the, or shall we say not integrated, but is going to require and generate a chiv of alakos. So there are two answers to that question. He, he doesn't mention it. One answer is the kish itself. And the other answer is Sipri Yitzis Mitzrayim. But then we're going to have to assume that Kiddush has within it Sipri Yitzis Mitzrayim. Because in the Kiddush, we'll say Zechel Yitzis Mitzrayim. So that makes that Kiddush part and parcel of Sipri Yitzis Mitzrayim. So the Briskorov will not deny within the framework of the Rambam that there is a mitzvah of Bracha Alakos, times four, as we said. And in that sense, we can set up a, an equation, again, a partial equation, but an equation nevertheless between the two mitzvahs of Zechira, Zechira as Sipritis Mitzrayim and Zechira as Yom HaShavos Likansha. What dimension is that equation? Vis-a-vis -vis what? I call it relativity. Is that equation acceptable? Vis-a-vis -vis the kiyum of setting up a brach alakos. And the Ramam certainly has that kiyum. It doesn't mean that that's the be-all and the end-all, we're going to still require above and beyond Cedar Brach Alakos, a Shtir as an independent Kiyum, but nevertheless, there is a Kiyum of, of setting up the Brach Alakos. And the Ram is not denying. And Kiddush, Alel Pesach, as one and the first of the Dalit Kosos, requires Brach Alakos. Forget about Shtir, just Brach Alakos. Or in the formulation of the Yosef, Sipur Alakos. Says the Rama, in event that you don't have Yayin, see, 
you know, you're in a no-win situation as far as the, the mitzvah of shtias yayin, that you can't fulfill, you don't have yayin. So the Ram says, then we fall back to the to 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 achieve the first key, the basic key of setting up your sipur or your bracha, but not on a coast because you don't have a coast on a pass. Now. The brisker of us we saw claims that the Ramam derived this hybrid understanding of the two deen and the two dimensions of Dalakosos from the Gemara itself. And that's the next paragraph. S Mekara Dvara Bir agrees, me divya gemara. The Gemara says on Kuf Yudzaino and Bays. Oh, this we didn't see yet. I'm sorry. You know, I thought this was going back to Kuf Ches. No, no, no. Now we're looking at a different Gemara. Now, this Gemara, we're about to, just by introduction, we're about to enter into the famous Chakira about Dalit Kosos, whether it's all one mitzvah made up of four parts or four different mitzvahs. Every Kos sets up its own mitzvah. And if we look at the Brisker Rav's understanding of the Rambam, we could say yes and no. Both are correct. They're four separate mitzvahs, and yet they're one mitzvah. How so? If you're dealing with the aspect of kosher bracha, we have four different brachas. Each bracha is independent of the other and generates its own cause. So every cause that you drink is a cue in that bracha that you recite on that cause. On the other hand, from the mitzvah and the perspective of the mitzvah shtia, it's not to drink one, two, three. It's to drink four cause. So the Gemara says on Kuf Yud Zion, Let's see if we can weave this into the text of the Gemara. Arba kosi tikra bonin derecheros. Kol chad v'chad navid bo mitzvah. Look how beautiful the Gemara becomes. It shines in all its glory according to the Brisker Rav's understanding of the realm. Arba kosi tikra bonin derecheros. You need four. For example, we mentioned more than once that the Yushalmi equates it with the Arba Lashon Shel Geul, or with the Arba Koso Shel Peronios, that Akash Baruch Hu is going to mashke the, the Rishoyim. Whatever it is, the number four has a corresponding, a, a significant. So that's called Arba Kosi Tikka Rabbana Derechez. The Rabbana made a takon on Arba Kosi, drink four cups. Less than four just won't do. But then it says, Kol chad v'chad mitzvah. What mitzvah? The answer is a mitzvah brachalakam. Mevuar she yisoda takonu derecherus, that's shtir. Ach achar she tiknu derecherus, ho sifu af l'sakin she kol chad v'chad na'avibar mitzvah kol v'shiru kol shal brach. Now, I'm not exactly sure when the Gemara should be understood in a very literal sense. You know, sometimes when you read a Gemara, you don't know to what extent do you have the right to be medayic, that this is meticulous and this is deliberate and derive, and derive conclusions. Sometimes uh, we've seen a million times how we can be more flexible with the text of the Gemara. If you want to take a literalist perspective, then we start with Arba Kosi Tiki Rabbana. The original Takana was four cups of Shtia Derecheros. However, then the Rabbana subsequently, and again, I don't, I don't mean subsequently necessarily on a time zone, but subsequently in terms of the concept, they established Kol Chad V'chad David Bar Mitzvah. Each one should be attached to another bracha to enhance the kingdom of the bracha Ala Kos. I'm not 100% convinced that that's how you have to read the Gemara. Although I, I admit it, that's what it sounds like. Arba Kosi Tiknu Le Rabbana. This was the Takana of Derecheris. And then 
the Rabbanan entered through the back door and they saw an opportunity, hey, let's add a separate mitzvah for each one of the kosos by attaching each coast to a bracha. I mean, it comes out according to this literalist reading of, of, of the Gemara that Shasan Bevasachas would be a fulfillment of the original Takana of Arba Kosi Tikkule Rabbana. Subsequently, they attached each cost to a separate bracha, four respectively. And now, Shasan Vasachas, he does not have that extra cue. But, but again, if you imagine a, a piggyback, right? So there's the person on the bottom, he's holding up the, you know, let's say the lighter, you know, the child on top. And Shasan Vasachas really is like the man on the bottom. You know, he's really doing the mitzvah. He's carrying his weight. He drank four kosa. Ah, we wanted to piggyback on top of the Dalit kosa. So let's attach to each one of those shtios a brach. Honestly, you know, with all due respect to his diuk, and again, I have a lot of respect for it. It's, it's very convincing. The language of the Gemara does indicate that they started with the takon of Dalit kosa. Shtios Dalit kosa. But I'll, I'll be honest with you, on a conceptual basis, if I would free myself of the text of the Gemara, I would come to the exact opposite conclusion. If you're talking about the Tzvei Dinim of Dalit Kosos, according to the Brisker Rav, I would start with Dalit Kosos of Racha. Because that's the basic structure of Sipa Yitzhiya Mitzrayim. And here I would follow the leader and who's the leader here? It's the Arsamea. And the equation to Kiddush on Shabbos that the Raman formulated. And that is that the Rabbanon started with Sipur, and then they added Dalit Kosos of Shtir. But the essential Takon of Dalit Kosos was really Kosos of Bracha. Because the framework and the structure of CPT Mitzrayim requires four different brachas. That's what it would have seemed like to me. And surely, if you go with the Russia's approach, and let's go with the second shot in the rush, the Russia say they started with Dalakos Shal Bracha, requiring a Moli Lugma, one person would drink. Hence, the low in singular in the Mishnah. And then on top, they, to boot, they added a Derech uh, another Kiyum of Shtiyas HaKod. But fundamentally, we begin the entire process, the takeoff is going to be Dalit Kosa Shobrach. And it makes so much sense, according to the Yosemir, because all these brachas are formulated around the CPT Mitzrayim, and the structure of the CPT Mitzrayim requires four different brachas. In fact, the second of the four brachas is Sipri Tzis Mitzrayim, in essence, the Magid that ends with Gal Yisrael. Okay. Now, one of the Talmidim of the Briska Rav, who rose to fame here in Eretz Yisrael, was Rav Shach. Are you familiar with Rav Shach? Name rings a bell? Yeah? He was the Rosh Shiva Panovich. And he saw himself to some extent as both a Talmud of the Briskarov and also like a colleague of the Briskarov. What do I mean? He First of all, was Machadish new chidushim based on the brisket derech. And number two, he would very often critique that which came before him. And what we're going to learn now is, a, is, is an ex exceptional example of that critique in which, oh, I forgot to mention the name of his safe, it's called the Avi Ezri. Many, many volumes. 
And he says the following. Aldivia grids, Shekosev Shim Shesovas Akas actually shows a cloud, kosher bracha, because he has four kosher without bracha and he drinks them consecutively. There's a weak element here in the equation of the brisket rub. And that's what the Aviezri is going to put his finger on that and you know, show how sensitive it is. Because as I mentioned to you many times, the idea of taking a bottle of wine out of your closet off the shelf, pour four kosas of yayin, drink them down and call that a mitzvah valid kosa. Seems like a very shallow idea. And it's more logical and more compelling to assume it's not just four cups of wine that you took out of your shelf. Each cost has to have a personality. It has to have an identity, a status that in some way upgrades the status of the of the cost to a cost of CPTS Mitzrayim. On that cost, I have a Mitzvah Shliya. Whereas the Brisker Rav is saying that Shasan Vavasachas, he drinks four cups of wine just out of the shelf, and he fulfills his Mitzvah of Dalit Kosas, of Shliya's Dalit Kosas. Toma of the Ezra. Toma means he, he, you know, you can translate the word Toma as amazing, but that's not the real translation. Toma means Tmiya. I, I can't believe he said such a thing. Hello, Afim Yesh Biyarva Kosas Din Shasiya. I'm not denying the fundamental principle that there's a mitzvah of Shtiyas Dalit Kosas. Ain't it Din Shtiyas Arva Kosas? Period. She'enam Kosas Shal Bracha. Kosas that are secular, so to speak, if you pardon the expression, they're mundane Kosas. They have no, no status. The shtia has to be on a cost that has a status to it. By the way, this you know, on a philosophical level, it's an amazing concept that uh, that we see over and over again in Allah. I don't know if the if the Velt you know recognizes this, the secular world and the that a recitation changes the nature of an object. And we had it the first Gemara in Mesech in the Dorim, that you take a neder and you convert something into a carbon. There's one man the who says, Yesh me'ila bekonomos. And in the case of a bracha, when you hold the kos of yayin and you recite a bracha over the kos, I'm not talking about Pia Goffin. I mean, that's even another Kiddush, but we're not up to that Kiddush yet. That's Birchas Hanenim. I'm talking about making a bracha like Kiddush or like uh, Magid, you know, Gal Yisrael. You change the cost. I don't know if you know this, but there are many briskers, you know, this is like the Chumr of the Week Club, that will hold the cost of Yayin throughout the entire Magid. I mean, I bless them if they finish Magid and they haven't spilled the cost. And by the way, they will not allow this minnow of the pinky. I call it the pinky minnow. You know what I'm talking about? You know, the esermakis, and you dip your pinky into the cost. I mean, to them, that's being pogam in a kosher brocha. You can't do that. But again, it's not a mitzvah shtia stalid kosher. It's a mitzvah shtia stalid kosher shal brocha. And in the case of Shasan Vasachas, where you forfeit the kosher brocha, can you fulfill Dalit Kosas of Shtia without a kosher Brucha? Kimosha Bechol Koshal Brucha Chayavon Lushtosa. Right, you have to drink from a kosher Brucha. Somebody has to drink. Doesn't have to be the Mavarech. And it could be, it could be a combination of different people. But at the end of the day, you need a Mole Lugma for Rov Kos, whatever it might be. The Abakosos. Now in our Rikosos, the shtia of a kosher bracha takes on new meaning and it becomes shtia derecheres. But again, you start with the shtia of, that's generated by a kosher bracha. Then you upgrade it to a shtia of derecheres. But you can't start from scratch. You can't jump over the first stage 
and just simply take yayin without a bracha and call it a shtir. The abacosis is chadish yesh din lishtosam midin cherus. Okay, that's going to add a couple of new halachas for sure. Like the fact that it's not enough for one person to drink, each person has to drink. Okay, you started with the kosher brach. You made it into a kosher brach. You transformed the identity, the, the, the status of the cause. Now drink the cause. And why? Because of their chavis. As I call it, wine from off the shelf. The shach, Rav Shach holds, you're not makayim anything, zilch. No brownie points. The shach is going to have to explain to me what does the Gemara mean then when it says shesom vasachas yotza? Mimarasha. You can't be yotze koshel bracha because you didn't recite the brachas. You can't be yotze shtia b'derecheres because it's not a koshel bracha. So what does the word mean when it says Shesom Vasachas? Yotze. That's the pill. And again, you know, before we take a look at the uh, at the note over here, I just want to point out that Rav Soloveitchik, without knowing about this Rav Shach, came up with the same conclusion. And therefore he required for the first of the Dalit Kosos, that every single person at the table should drink Yayin Haroy Lenisa Chalgabi Mizbeah. Because you have to get a Kosho Bracha, and then you could drink from the Kosho Bracha. But the first cost of the Kosho Bracha can't be Kandidon. It can't be Yayin Sheish Bodvash. It can't be Yayin that was pasteurized, Mavushal. All that is out because it's not Roy Lenisbeah. And the first Bracha that you recite on the first of the Kosos is Kiddush. And we're going now according to the sheet of the Rambam, the Kiddush requires Yaina Royal Anisa. And that's exactly what the Shach is saying over here. Again, he didn't know about this whole Torah with the Rambam and the Yain Shal, Shal Kiddush and Royal Mizbeh. I forget that. He didn't know about all that. But what he did know is that the Mitzvah Shtias Arab Kosas is Kosa Shal Bracha. And if your first cause, is not royal in Nisuk. Okay? It can't be a kosher bracha as far as Kiddush is concerned. That's the Ramam Shita. I'm having a lot of fun over here. I don't know if you noticed it. I mean, things, the pieces of the puzzle are finally beginning to fit into place. I mean, things that we said a month ago are now becoming so much more alive. Let's see footnote number Chavches. I am Liel Bevir Das Atosis. Kifisha bir avi Ezri as divrei Rambam came bir and divrei Dar Shmuel as das hatosis. All of the Eshdim should see their cheres. Ach ein din hashesia yisod chiyuv arba kosos. Right, so if let's say Tosis at the end of the day is going to supply every member of the household with his own yayin for shisia, that's already secondary. The so the fundamental structure or chiu, as formulated by the rabbanu with kosher shalbrach. So let's begin to calculate. A nafkamino, if there is one, between Tosus and the Ramba. So I'm going to go under for a minute. Let me just think. I, I don't see it. Anybody see it? What, what would be the nafkabina now between the Rambam and Tosis? 
if we're saying that even according to the Rambam, you need a kosho brocha, and you can't just drink four kosos. And according to Tosfus, the isod of the mitzvah of Dalit kosos is four kosos shal brocha. What then is enough community between the Rambam and Tosfus? If we go with the first terrace of the rush, then Nochadaiti, then I see Tosis and the Ram on two different sides of the of the of the field. Because the Russian is first terrace is basically introducing Shisia in Dalit Kosos, but only within the structure and the regulations that govern Shesiyah's kosher brach. Whereas I believe that the Ramam would maintain that Shasiya is a kiyum unto itself. Now, whether we have to go as far as the Briska Rav and you know set up this independent mitzvah of Shtiyas Dalit Kosos, or rather we would go with the Abiyah Ezri's Pshat in the Rambam, that we begin with Dalit Kosos Shal Bracha, and then we introduce Shasiya. So then the Nafkamina between the Ramam and Tosfus. Again, if we're going with the Abi Ezri, I don't see any nafkamina because the Abi Ezri says that even the Rama requires Shtia on Kosa Shal Bracha. And for sure, Tosis and the Rush would require Shasiya of Kosa Shal Bracha. Because the fundamental Takana, the Yisod Achiv, is Shtia. Yeah, I'm sorry, is Kosa Shal Bracha. Ah, he writes at the end of footnote number Chavches, Ulefize, Hatosus Aramam Lo Nechliku Bisodadin. Based on the Abi Ezri, the Ramam and Tosus really have one conceptual definition of what the Mitzvah Dalakosus is. But then he writes, What does that mean? What's the Tzarch Ian well, what Nafkamina is he, does he have in mind? He becomes very mute at this point. Well, tell me, well, please reveal to me where is the Nafkamina? Let me, let me try one possibility. Just throw out an idea. What could be the nafkamina between the Rambam and Tosis? And then we'll see if it works into the Brisker Rav or into the Aviezri. Here's the case. Ruven recites Kiddush. And again, I can apply this to all any of the Dalakos. Ruven re recites Kiddush. And Shimon drinks from the cups. 
Now, clearly, Ruvain did not fulfill a mitzvah of Shtia. He didn't drink anything. Shimon fulfilled a mitzvah of Shtia. And the mitzvah of Kiddush, he fulfilled through Shomei Ka'ona by hearing the Kiddush of the Makadi. So Shimon is fine. Ruvain, on the other hand, forfeits the mitzvah of what? Of Shtia Sarvakos. He didn't drink from the cars. Now here's the question. Again, it's right now, it's a conceptual question. Did Ruvain fulfill the mitzvah of Brach Alakos? Lechari, yes. He doesn't, you know, for Brach Alakos, you don't have to drink from the cars. It's enough that somebody else drinks from the cars and Shimon drank from the cars. But in this case, if we assume, well, let's go with the Brisker Rav right now. That the original Takana was Shtia. And within the framework of Shtia, the Rabbanan added the Kos, meaning the Bracha. Then it's possible that if you're piggybacking and Koshal Bracha is standing on the shoulders of Shtia, their Cherus, then since Ruvain forfeited the mitzvah of Derech he didn't do any shtir, then he may have forfeited even the kiyum of koshal bracha, because the koshal bracha was an add-on to the takon of dalid koshal shtir. Whereas according to Tosus and Shita, no, we started with dalid koshal bracha, and then we added an additional kiyum of shtir. But the original mitzvah of dalid kosos remains as an independent entity which he could be Mekayim even without Shtir, just by setting up his Brach Alakos. Again, somebody has to drink from the cost, but we have someone voluntary, voluntarily drinking from the cost. So Ruvay could be Mekayim, at least the mitzvah of kosher Bracha, even though he didn't drink from the cost, like any Kiddush. Shimon has an additional cue of Dalit Kosos, Shtia. And that's according to Tos. According to the Rambam, and again, here I'm very much influenced by the Brisker Rav. In the Aviesis frame reference, I really don't know at this point what the Nafkamina would be between Tosis and the Rambam. We'll, we'll, we'll try to get a hold of uh, the Aviesri. You probably could get it in uh, online, maybe, in Safari or whatever it's called, Safari. But as far as the Brisker Rav is concerned, the Rav might be going a step further. And he's going to be saying that you cannot be Mekayim, the mitzvah of Kos Shel Bracha, without the Shtir. So that if Ruben didn't drink from the Kos, then maybe we would say he forfeits the mitzvah of Kos Shel Bracha. Why? Because the mitzvah of koshal bracha was an add-on attached to the mitzvah of shtir. And we began fundamentally, right, the takeoff was the mitzvah of shtir. Once Ruben forfeits the mitzvah of shtir, the mainly forfeits the mitzvah and the kiyum of koshal bracha. I'm hesitant to say this, because then we're going to get all the way over to the tour, who says... That he can't make Kiddush on the night of the Seder of a Pass. Because the main mitzvah here is Shtias Yayin. And once he forfeits Shtias Yayin, because he doesn't have Yayin Nebuch, he cannot even salvage the mitzvah of Kiddush. I, I'm afraid to, I'm very hesitant to put that into the into the Rambam. The Rambam says if he doesn't have, if he doesn't have a kos, then let him just. Be Makadish No way of reconciling that with the tour. Okay. Now, let's just think about the following question. In a kosher bracha, 
we require mole lugma. Not necessarily the Mavarek, but somebody will drink mole lugma. With regard to Dalit Kosos, Rav Nachbar Yitzchak in the Gemara and Kufches says you have to drink Rov Kos. From the Briska Rav's perspective, if the fundamental mitzvah was established as Shtia, then Rov Kos might mean a lot more than Moli Lugmov, again, depending on the size of your Kos and how much Yayin, what a volume of Yayin is in the Kos. So that it could be that according to the Briska Rav, there it's Vedinim and two different Shi'urim. One Shi'ur is for the mitzvah of Yayin Shal Shtias Derech and that requires Rov Kos. And another shear for, for Koshal Bracha, which is Moli Lugma, might be a lot less. But according to the Avi Ezri, that the mitzvah shtia is to drink a Koshal Bracha, then the fundamental shear should be Moli Lugma, not Rov Kos. So let's take a look at the next paragraph, because after that, he has a summary. How are we doing on the clock? All right, we'll try to fit in another five minutes. He says, He's talking about the Avi <laughs> All right, this is uh, this is a little bit more challenging. Let's just—I'm going to just give it two minutes, and then I want to jump to the summary here. For some reason, unbeknown to me, Rav Shach insists that Rov would make sense with regard to a kosher bracha, but not with regard to shtia. And if the Gemara applies Rov to Dalit Kosos, that could only mean that we're dealing with kosher bracha, but not the way the Briska Rav understood it, that we're dealing with a separate, independent, and fundamental, because this is the seminal chiyu, of Shtia's coast, because if it's Shtia's coast, then there's no din of road. What, I tr- what I'm going to try to figure out, and this is for tomorrow, so we know that, try to unravel this mystery that Rav Shach insists that road would only make sense if we're talking about a kosher bracha. But if we're talking about an independent mitzvah Shtia, then road would not be applicable, and hence he disproves the pshat of the brisker road. And then he says, Lasikum, in some, Biru Akhona Bidibri Ramam or Samechu Chiyah Bidibri Ramam, Shedir Abakos Din Sipur Alayayin. Hagriz O Chiyah Shedasa Ramam, Shiyeshnan Shnei Din in Bar Makosos, Gam Din Shtia, Vagam Din Bokhalakos. Achavi Ezri Toma Al Biuro Shel Hagriz. So then I just read the Sikum. I think it's Muvan, Muvan Mewa. Let's just make a note of where we get up to.
Now, Bosai, if you can hang in for just one more minute, 